Hi everyone, happy Monday. Hope you guys had a great weekend. We are now on chapter 6 of Matilda and it is titled The Platinum Blonde Man. So first we have a few vocabulary words. The first one is fascination. It is to cause someone to be very interested in something. The second one is vigorous, which means healthy and strong. The third one is devour, to quickly eat all of something. The fourth one is incapable, not able to do something. The fifth one is horrendous, very bad or unpleasant. So there are five new vocabs for today. And we are on chapter six. The Platinum Blonde Man. There was no doubt in Matilda's mind that this le latest display of foulness by her father deserved severe punishment. And as she sat eating her awful fried fish and fried chips and ignoring the television, her brain went to work on various possibilities. By the time she went up to the bed, her mind was made up. The next morning, she got up early and went into the bathroom and locked the door. As we already know, Miss Wormwood's hair was dyed a brilliant blonde, platinum blonde, very much the same glistening silvery color as a female tightrope walker's tights in a circus. The big dyeing job was done twice a year at the hairdresser's, but every month or so in between. Miss Wormwood used to freshen it up by giving it a rinse in a wash basin with something called Platinum Blonde Hair Dye Extra Strong. Kept in the cupboard in the bathroom, and underneath the tile, and underneath the title on the label, were written on were written the words "Caution: This is peroxide. Keep away from children." Matilda had read it many times with fascination. Matilda's father had a fine crop of black hair, which he parted in the middle, and of which he was exceedingly proud. Good strong hair, he said. He was fond of saying, means there's a good strong brain underneath. Like Shakespeare, Matilda had once said to them. Like who? Shakespeare, daddy. Was he brainy? Very, daddy. He had masses of hair, did he? He was bald. To which the father had snapped, if you can't talk sense, then shut up. Do you guys know who Shakespeare is? Here is Mr. Wormwood and how he parted his hair. Anyway, Mr. Wormwood kept his hair looking bright and strong, or so he thought, by rubbing it in to it every morning very large quantities of a lotion called Oil of Violet's Hair Tonic. A bottle of this smelly purple mixture always stood on the shelf above the sink in the bathroom alongside all the toothbrushes, and a very vigorous scalp massage with oils of violet took place daily after shaving was completed. This hair and scalp massage was always accompanied by loud masculine grunts and heavy breathing and gasps as, Ah, oh, that's better. That's the stuff. Which could be clearly heard by Matilda in her bedroom across the corridor. Now, in the early morning privacy of the bathroom, Matilda unscrewed the cap of her father's oil of violets and tipped three quarters of the contents down the drain. Then she filled the bottle up with her mother's platinum blonde hair dye extra strong. She carefully left enough of her father's original hair tonic in the bottle so that when she gave it a good shake, the whole thing still looked reasonably purple. She, re she then replaced the bottle on the shelf above the sink, taking care to put her mother's bottle back in the cupboard. So far, so good. At breakfast time, Matilda sat quietly at the dining room table, eating her cornflakes. Her brother sat opposite her with his back to the door, devouring hunks of bread smothered with a mixture of peanut butter and strawberry jam. Their mother was just out of sight around the corner in the kitchen, making Mr. Wormwood's breakfast, which always had to be two fried eggs on fried bread with three pork sausages and three stri strips of bacon and some fried tomatoes. At this point, Mr. Wormwood came noisily into the room. He was incapable of entering any room quietly, especially at breakfast time. He always had to make his appearance felt immediately by creating a lot of noise and clatter. One could almost hear him saying, It's me! Here I come! The great man himself! The master of the house! The wage earner! The one who makes it possible for all the rest of you to live so well! Notice me and pay your respects! On this occasion, he strode in and slapped his son on the back and shouted, Well, my boy, your father feels he, he's in for another great money-making day today at the garage. I've got a few little beauties I'm going to flog to the idiots this morning. Where's my breakfast? It's coming, treasure, Miss Wormwood called from the kitchen. Matilda kept her face bent low over her cornflakes. She didn't dare look up in the first place. And secondly, 
if she did, she if she didn't dare look up. In the first place, she wasn't all that sure she what she was going to see. And secondly, if she did see what she thought she was going to see, she wouldn't trust herself to keep a straight face. The son was looking directly ahead out of the window, stuffing himself with bread and peanut butter and strawberry jam. The father was just moving around to sit at the head of the table when the mother came sweeping out from the kitchen carrying a huge plate piled with his eggs and sausages and bacon and tomatoes. She looked up, she caught sight of her husband and stopped dead. Then she let out a scream that seemed to lift her right up into the air and she dropped the plate with a crash and a splash onto the floor. Everyone jumped, including Mr. Wormwood. What the heck's the matter with you, woman? He shouted. Look at the mess you've made on the carpet. Your hair, the mother was shrieking, pointing a quivering finger at her husband. Look at your hair. What have you done to your hair? What's wrong with my hair, for heaven's sake, he said. Oh my God, Dad, what have you done to your hair, the son shouted. A splendid, noisy scene was building up nicely in the breakfast room. So here's Miss Wormwood dropping the plate. Matilda said nothing. She simply sat there admiring the wonderful effect of her own handiwork. Mr. Wormwood's fine crop of black hair was now a dirty silver, the collar this time of a tightrope walker's tights that had not been washed for the entire circus season. You've, you've, you've dyed it, shrieked the mother. Why did you do it, you fool? It looks absolutely frightful. It looks horrendous. You look like a freak. What in the world are you talking about, the father yelled, putting both hands to his hair. I most certainly have not dyed it. What do you mean I've dyed it? What's happened to it? Or is it some sort of stupid joke? His face was turning pale green, the color of sour apples. You must have dyed it, Dad, the son said. It's the same color as his mom's, only much dirtier looking. Of course he's dyed it, the mother cried. It can't change color all by itself. What on earth were you trying to do? Make yourself look handsome or something? You look like someone's grandmother gone wrong. Get me a mirror, the father yelled. Don't just stand there shrieking at me. Get me a mirror. The mother's handbag lay on a chair at the other end of the table. She opened the bag and got out a powder compact that had a small round mirror on the inside of the lid. She opened the compact and handed it to her husband. He grabbed it and held it before his face, and in doing so spilled most of the powder all over the front of his fancy tweed jacket. Be careful, shrieked the mother. Now look what you've done. That's my best Elizabeth Arden face powder. Oh my gosh, yelled the father, staring into the little mirror. What's happened to me? I look terrible. I look just like you, gone wrong. I can't go down to the garage and sell cars like this. How did it happen? He started around the room, first at the mother, then at the son, then at Matilda. How could it have happened, he yelled. Does he suspect that it was Matilda? What do you guys think? I imagine, Daddy, Matilda said quietly, that you weren't looking very hard and you simply took Mommy's bottle of hair stuff off the shelf instead of your own. Of course that's what happened, the mother cried. Well, Harry, how stupid can you get? Why didn't you read the label before you started splashing the stuff all over you? Mine's terribly strong. I'm only meant to use one tablespoon of it in a whole basin of water and you've gone and put it all over your head neat. It'll probably take all your hair off in the end. Is your scalp beginning to burn, dear? You mean I'm going to lose all of my hair? The husband yelled. I think you will, the mother said. Peroxide is a very powerful chemical. It's what they put down in the lavatory to disinfect the pan, only they give it another name. What are you saying, the husband cried. I'm not a lavatory pan. I don't want to be disinfected. Even diluted like this, like I use it, the mother told him. It makes a good deal of my hair fall out. So goodness knows what's going to happen to you. I'm surprised I didn't take the whole top of your head off. What shall I do, the father willed. Tell me quick what to do before it starts falling out. Matilda said, I can give it a good wash, Dad, if I were you, with soap and water. But you'll have to hurry. Will that change the color back, the father asked anx anxiously. Of course it won't, the mother said. Then what do I do? I can't go around looking like this forever. You'll have to have it dyed black, the mother said. But wash it first or there won't be anything, to anything there to dye. Right, the father shouted, springing into action. Get me an appointment with your hairdresser this instant for a hair dyeing job. Tell them it's an emergency. They've got to boot someone else off their list. I am going upstairs to wash it now. With what the man dash with that the man dashed out of the room and Miss Wormwood sighed deeply, went to the telephone to call the beauty parlor. 
He just do some pretty silly things now and again, doesn't he, Mommy? Matilda said. The mother, dialing the number on the phone, said, I'm afraid men are not always quite as clever as they think they are. You will learn that when you get a bit older, my girl. So there is chapter six. Make sure you go to Clever and answer the form for Monday. Hope you guys have a great day. Bye.